welcome to Pentecost Day. Pentecost Day, things may be a little weird. Right? So just a little cautious. For the sermon today, I picked the text from Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Let us read that verse, those verses together. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. That's already born on Pentecost Day. Things is weird. See, I forgot to turn on my mic. And now you do. So grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As you already heard from the Old Testament, Genesis 11, talking about the Tower of Babel. And at that time, there, were, there was only one language. I'm not sure what language they were speaking. But their plan, because they spoke one language, their plan was to come up with a plan to re reach heaven by building a tower. And God came down, confused their language, and they all dispersed throughout the world. That's God's story. And also we heard today that God called his children, all nations together in Jerusalem, to build a temple or a tower that will reach heaven. And we heard that on Pentecost Day, all his disciples were gathered in one place, and all of a sudden, a sound like a blowing of violent wind came from heaven and filled the, the whole house where they were sitting. And amazingly, Peter stood up, addressed the crowd. I'm sure he had the Holy Spirit with him. And that's their story. And this is my story, how the Holy Spirit work through me. The Holy Spirit, nobody understand what the role of the Holy Spirit, no one understood. I don't think any of you understood what the role of the Holy Spirit is. And the Holy Spirit, all we know is that it's just the third person of the Trinity. That's all we know. And it plays a very, very important role in our lives. Especially those who were born not Christian. And we know exactly when God calls us, why He calls us, and the feelings that we receive at the moment. And this is my story, how I became who I am today, and why. It was a hot summer afternoon, around 2 in the afternoon, when, while I was driving to work. And as I came to a stop, a traffic stoplight, I felt something just bang on my on my right ear, my side. And then I, I woke up, and all of a sudden I felt something told me, saying, go to church, go to church. That was not my intention, to hear the word go to church. So I keep one in my head and say, okay, why am I hearing this today? So the, I got to work. When I got to my workplace, I picked up the phone and dialed home. And Sue, my wife, 
she picked up the phone, and the moment I heard she say, hello, I sh shouted out to her and said, don't go to bed tonight, okay? Don't go to bed. Wait for me. We need to talk. I have something to talk with you. I didn't know what was going on at her head on that moment. She probably thought I'm in trouble or something or, or got into a fight or something. I don't know. So all I hear she said, okay, and I said, okay, good. Gotta go. Click. Off to work. That evening when I got home, all the kids were sleeping. And all I saw was Sue sitting in the living room, patiently waiting for me to see what I have to say to her. The moment I saw her there and she's waiting, I just told her, I, I just blurted out and said, let's go to church. <laughs> it's so simple, isn't it? Just go to church. It took me, I mean, I counted my, when I become a youth, about 20 plus years to say the word, go to church. And then I looked at her and she said, what? What's wrong with you, right? What's wrong with you? You don't say, you told me you don't want to go to church. Because if you say you, if you go to church, you're, Cousins, your family is going to disown you, and you will have nobody. I, told, I said to her, don't worry. I got everything under control. <laughs> don't worry. You'll deal with that later. But whether you're going or not, I'm going. I'm not staying. I'm going. I don't. You see, when the Holy Spirit worked in our life and we open it up for him to live in us every decision that we make it's just so easy it's just so easy before i was afraid of being cast out from my family but the moment i opened my heart for the holy spirit to to work to me i had no fear whether my family is gonna like me or not own me or disown me. I just told you that this is my life. This is your life. This is our family's life. I'm going. And that Sunday, we did. You know what happened at church? I don't think you know. So the moment I step into the sanctuary, I felt a bright light just shone at me. And I feel that peace in my life. I said, this is what I am looking for. This peace that I have been searching for a long time. And now that I became a pastor for three years, three plus years, and study our Lutheran theology, and I found this about the Holy Spirit, this explanation of the Holy Spirit that was written by Martin Luther. This is what he writes or wrote. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keep it with Jesus in the word true faith. The Holy Spirit called us to build a tower, not using with our hands or man-made tool, but he called us to build a tower that through Christ our Lord. And the moment that God calls you, 
may not be the same as mine. But we know one thing, we all probably have one thing in common. When the Lord, when the Holy Spirit called us and worked in our life, it probably wasn't the perfect moment in our life. We probably went through some horrible things in our life. Loss of job, loss of a loved one, or was in some kind of trouble in our life. Holy Spirit said, come, my child, come, build your tower through Jesus Christ. And that's how God called you to build a tower that will reach heaven. It's not with my hands, but with Jesus Christ. And today, remember the day that you became Christian. How God works in you, especially the Holy Spirit. And I don't feel like you want to go back to that experience, but a new experience. God called me when I was in the middle of some struggle, whether I should stick with shamanism or whether I should move forward. I stuck. I was stuck. But the Holy Spirit knocked me and said, wake up, it's time to go. And I did. And as the Holy Spirit is working on Pentecost Day, and as you've heard from the readings, the Holy Spirit came to the disciple and said, wake up, wake up. It's time to proclaim your Lord Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection to all these people who came to Jerusalem. They need to hear the gospel. That is when Peter stood up and addressed to the people. So all, and they were all nations came from everywhere. And there were people from Parthians, Medias, Elimites, <coughs> residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, and Pompilia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belong to Cyrene. And all people from Rome, and both Jews and proselytes, and there's more that came on that day of Pentecost. Do you know how many languages are in the world today? Estimated to be 6,500 languages in the whole world. And today, <coughs> China, Chinese, or Mandarin, Spanish, English, Hindi, Arabic are the top five. I'm glad English is still part of the language on the top three. It's really nice. Mom's not even on the list. Can you imagine? It's horrible. You're losing to the English, okay? You're losing. Or whatever it is, because God knows that if we all speak one language, we will not get the work done. That's why he confused every language. So that we may have something in connection. Share our language, and through language, we can share Christ. And that is what's happening in the world today. And that is why I heard the message. And the Holy Spirit worked in me. And as you heard in the readings, it's not from the readings, but after today's reading, it's about 3,000 people or more people heard the message, and 3,000 of them were baptized. And they all speak different languages, but at that moment, they all spoke one common language. They all confessed that Jesus is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead and whoever repent will be saved. That's all. And that's all they say. Yes, we are sinners. We need repent. And they all confessed that Jesus was still Lord. Because they were looking for a towel. 
to get to heaven. And they have tried all their life, but none of them reach heaven. But today, in Pentecost, they heard that Jesus is the way. That's why they all confess that Jesus is Lord and God. Everything is impossible with men. But with God, all things are possible. If God can call me through my, in the middle of my distress, and you, God will call anybody. So we are not here by accident, but because the Holy Spirit worked in us and wanted to free us from our distress. That's why we are here. To learn that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And through him, we can build the tower that will reach heaven. 